I'm just digging too hard on the Almond Brothers right now. Honestly, this is. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff right there. A little more of that, please. Ladies and gentlemen, where's my camera? God damn it. Oh, no. All right, we got to start this intro over. This is a disaster. All right, stop. Stop. Hold the show. I, I need a, a soundboard for that, uh, like, tire going in reverse uh, video. Where is my video capture device? God damn it. Okay, well, we're starting this one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Captain... No, fuck. Welcome back to Canada Cup Season 7. Uh, the Drinking Boys versus Shazam. A hot best of one to get our evening started tonight. Uh, these hot dogs are fighting for life in the tournament. This is lower bracket, dreaded best of ones. These teams better have shown up to play. I'm Zayori, joined tonight for the first time in the history of Dota. Zayori and Lyrical cast coming together here. Lyrical, what's going on, buddy? It's looking pretty good, you know. It got Shazam a little bit surprised to see him in the lower bracket, but they ran into some some pretty stiff competition. I gotta say, Complexity and, and DC were up there as well, but pretty clearly the favorites. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling good. I, I've been casting all week. It's good to just like I was production, I was camera work, I was even an admin through a lot of the games I was casting here. I just get to sit back and listen to you talk. It's great. Yeah, no, it's it's good. It's fun to be the co-caster sometimes. No, you get to listen to a little music on your end. You don't have to spit any special buttons it's just you and the glorious dota in front of you that's it man absolutely I'm, I'm feeling good but yeah invoker picked up some some faceless void shenanigans followed up by the lion um yeah. seems pretty standard I, I always feel like we see this this invoker picked up whenever shazam get a chance for it yep absolutely uh, probably that mss invoker he's been doing quite well they good to have the vengeful spirit against the void though i mean i've been casting mostly c dota recently a little bit of canada cup mixed in uh at least the games i've seen void not necessarily that first pick by most teams so venge nice and early you know you can swap your teammate get stuck side of the chrono but probably uh, the beginnings of a good team fight lineup here for the drinking boys this is also a team that i don't know that well i don't really recognize most of these i i've seen shanks before but that's about it i'm gonna be honest on this one no, it's true. I, I haven't seen a ton of them either. They ran a couple of... I think they actually played against Shazam, if I'm not mistaken, in the Manila Major qualifiers, and it wasn't uh, particularly even, as we saw that Shazam made it through pretty handedly. But yeah, they, they're a team that's, I think, a stack that's been around for a little while. The Drinking Boys, you can see that they've got their little avatar of Pikachu oh. drinking out of a river there as well. Um, yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. So, I, I don't know, but a, a lot, not a whole lot of pressure on their plate, I would say. They're, they're not the ones that are, that are going to be under the pressure to win this that's shazam and maybe get a little bit of a chance to to pull out a, a an upset here you know do we do we dare actually i i always like to look at the dota 2 lounge bets because i feel like they're the most telling people that don't care about money as much as they care about dota 2 cosmetics those are the the voices that i need i, I want heard on this <laughs> oh god yeah 80 83 for shazam <laughs> so dkb clearly uh going for the spirit breaker draft this game 17 percent is going to carry them to victory they will settle for a bounty hunter now though nice aggressive roaming support pairs pretty nicely with the lion you know uh, kind of makes up for what the lion doesn't have and vice versa you've got one guy with the big crowd controls the burst damage and the other guy giving everybody movement speed and a little bit of follow-up burst damage of his own maybe not the strongest pick against an invoker but does uh, maybe uh, make the shazam think twice here if they were considering a jungler yeah and the other thing about this that i always feel like is just because of the way that bounty hunter works with that track gold advantage you basically turn another hero into a core if you start getting those pickoffs and already drinking boys want to team fight a lot you got the lion there as you mentioned the burst damage with the finger of death you're gonna be able to get a kill and one of the ways that you can punish this is by going like super heavy aggro and shazam are kind of already set up to do that with an invoker and eventual spirit if they wanted to they could just go for a sort of a, a very push oriented to draft and then bounty hunters just kind of left sitting there like what do i do i throw out a shuriken and then i get yep. exploded by a meatball combo yeah you're absolutely right i mean those are the kind of drafts that bounty hunter really struggles against early on at least until he hits level six he is so bad in those early 5v5 engage engagements and even 
he needs a little bit of farm before he really wants to start fighting in 5v5s. He's much more about finding those little uh, convenient fights where you have the numbers advantage. You know, the other team thinks it's a 2v2, then all of a sudden Bounty Hunter pops out of the shadows. Shazam grabbed the Witch Doctor, another great team fighting support, and also synergizes with that push like you were talking about. They've got some nice synergy here with Minus Armor from Forge Spirits, uh, your Wave of Terror on the Venge. Of course, all that physical damage from one Witch Doctor. So, well, gearing up for a pretty scary mid game, but here we go. Now we see the real synergy. A little damage to add to the uh, the chronosphere there. Gyrocopter, big AOE coming out. Yeah, that's that's scary, and it also holds that high ground really well. And we saw a couple of these other bands that came out from Shazam. It's the Phoenix. It was the the Alchemist, and this is what I was going to say: is that it felt like this might be one of the ways that they could have gone for is just a heavy push oriented draft. They take away that Phoenix that's great at being able to stop a push in its tracks, and the Alchemist who's going to cause trouble there with you know being able to get up that radiance wow. eventually. So this from Shazam is just like we don't want to deal with your shenanigans. We want this game over. Best Best of one, we're gonna own your faces. I want to see how Drinky Boys deal with this. I kind of feel like a, a Winter Wyvern at this it would have been really great, but they, they can't really pick it anymore because of the Bounty Hunter and the Lion already being in the pool. Yeah, this is a really scary lineup for Shazam all of a sudden. I mean, I, I'm used to that Drow, Range for, uh, Drow Ranger, Vengeful Spirit, Puck trio, and those three heroes are incredible together. You get great damage from the auras when you group up, and uh, you get that damage across lanes. Puck, already a very high base damage hero, can just completely dominate. Mm -hmm. Invoker, well, he's not a high base damage hero, but that's one of the areas that he struggles in. So Drow Ranger can help make up for that deficit, make his laning stage a lot better, and talk about five man. Have we talked about the five man yet for this lineup? Because my <laughs> God, 15 minutes in, they're going to be knocking down towers like it's nobody's business, just having a field day, picking off tier ones and tier twos. Curious what they're going to grab to round this out. I think the Tidehunter was a really smart band here from Drinking Boys. That's like the, the one meaty frontliner that they could have used and just fight around that Ravage. That would have been a really good pick here. So we'll see what they grab. Drinking Boys will at least have the luxury of last pick so they can react a little bit. I, I wouldn't mind a Batrider uh, being able to Ooh. pull somebody out of the, the fight right at the start of it. It feels yeah. like that could be pretty strong, uh, you know, in the offlane position there. Other ones, uh, Beastmaster obviously got banned out. A lot of the good offlaners have been taken out. They're just going to go for the Avedon. My God. Wow. This is, I mean, Curse of Avernus is so good for pushing as well. Mm -hmm. They, like, all right, there's levels of drow strats, ones where you can sort of get, uh, scale it into the late game, and ones where it's just like, we're going to own your face. This is like the ultimate of we're going to own your face. Yeah, I, I would agree. A huge sustainability with this lineup. Witch Doctor and Abaddon can keep people alive so well, especially in the laning phase uh, when, and when those early skirmishes break out. Even if Drow gets jumped on by the Bounty Hunter or caught in a Chrono, chances are there's going to be somebody nearby. At the very least, the Witch Doctor should have that Voodoo Restoration on to heal people up while they're stuck in Chrono. So this is uh, going to be rocky. I think Abaddon should have a pretty good time in the off lane If he's farming against like a, a Gyro Lion with a roaming Bounty Hunter, he should be able to get at least some last hits here and there we'll be able to get experience so i like this shazam lineup for drinking boys what is the final pick here probably a mid to square up against that invoker i mean they could take something like a viper perhaps you've got a bounty hunter who's probably going to gravitate towards the guardian greaves so that could open up for him to go for a more damage based build you know right into an s and y or like a phase drum to try and combat some of the early aggression put pressure on the invoker uh puck would have been a good choice as well just another control hero they need something with good anti-push just to go with this gyrocopter. Maybe a Wind Ranger could work. Yeah, that's a possibility, certainly. It feels like it, it, being able to just pick somebody off at the Whoa. start. But this, all right, this is There's this makes -push. sense to me, too. Yeah, anti-push. They need somebody also who can team fight because what's going to happen is all the tier 2 towers are gone. There's no... There's no saving them at this point. So drinking boys are saying, how do we deal with that fact? And Tinker is pretty much the best answer you got. Invoker, like, they're all going to be in one lane. So if you can have somebody pushing along those side lanes, maybe you're going to be able to make uh, them retreat back. But regardless, I'm I'm just not sure if it's really going to be enough. Because I, I feel like Shazam can just walk up and high ground them. And there's not a whole lot that drinking boys can mm -hmm. do. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a I, tough one. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have faith in the Shazam lineup because of how early it comes online. You know, I like to think of Dota as the laning stage is the first checkpoint. So even if you have a team that doesn't match up as well in team fight or doesn't match up as well in late game, it doesn't really matter if you win all three of your lanes, for example. And I think Shazam have 
possibility to do this. I, I don't think they're just going to run over DKB, but I think they'll have a lot of early momentum. And when they start fighting, it may be that 10-minute mark. Maybe if they push it to 15, if they're waiting for a couple of key items, uh, like maybe a mech or something like that. That's going to be a window where DKB are just not ready to fight, right? It's going to take Gyro longer than that to come online. Void's ult is still going to be at a relatively long cooldown because he probably won't get level 2 before, or uh, level 11 before then. And same with the Tinker. That's a hero that needs a lot of farm early on. BOTs, Blink Dagger, at the very least, before he really starts getting scary. So, we'll see. Breaching high ground could be hard for Shazam. Maybe they'll hit that wall. 25 minutes comes. They've got huge momentum. They try to go high ground, and we see a five-man wipe. That's when this game can get interesting, but... You know, even if they have the team fight, DKB still have to connect with it. That's the magic that has to happen. I mean, and the 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 good side you got right now for DKB is they've got the bounty hunter with the Stevie Ray Vaughn hat and the the pistols there. This guy's <laughs> going to be giving them a little bit of gold going back the other way. So if they're capable of finding those engagements, then you're going to be able True. to just have a huge influx of gold, and that's really what they're going to be hoping for. Yeah, absolutely. I think there is a lot of onus on this Tinker, though, to uh, oh, yeah. to get something done in the laning phase. And I'm curious how much pressure Shazam are going to put on him. They've got two great roaming supports, and they could set up for the Drow Ranger pretty well in the lane. If TC just gets a little bit of an edge, he should be able to hold his own for at least uh, a, ro a smoke rotation towards mid. And Tinker is pretty gankable on those early levels. Sure, he's got some annoying burst damage, but you can definitely kill him when he can't just TP around the map. Yeah, definitely. That that's gonna be the thing to try and do. And you can see down here in the bottom lane, Shazam. Ooh. They feel pretty good about their chances already. Uh, throwing out the taunts, but they need to be a little bit careful because they got a five-man smoke coming in. Uh oh, this could end disastrously here. Shank scouting it out. Of course, he's invisible. Doesn't break the smoke. They go right in onto TC. The hex to start it off, and easy first blood on the Drow Ranger. Who better to pick it up than Tinker himself with that laser? Well, to come stuff. out of the gate swinging, there you go. Yeah, that's what they need to do. And, I mean, it's a pretty good rotation it's the zone that we normally see. It's just a little bit, you know, too far forward. And maybe Shazam not giving them the, quite the respect that they would want. I, I will say the other thing that I'm a little bit curious about, this is normally a lineup where Invoker would want to go for the, the Quas Exhort. Um, and I still think that he's going to do that. But he ended up going for uh, the Quas first. And there's some chance that he might need to take an early point in Wex just because of this bounty hunter running in on him. And mm -hmm. need to make sure that he ends up getting away from it. We'll see if he ends up going for that or not. Uh, yeah. it, it's still something where he's definitely going to want to go Quas Exor, but um, it, it, there's going to be pressure here on him in the mid lane, as you said, from that Tinker. Yeah, you're right. Having that flexibility to use Ghost Walk could come into play, but I, I agree. Forge Spirits are going to be a key part of this pushing strat. The Minus Armor alone definitely makes a, a pretty big difference. We'll see the Bounty Hunter look for a potential Courier Snipe. There is a Salve on it, but they're going to keep it back at home for now. Always a rocky moment. Can the bounty hunter predict which way the courier is going to go? Shazam should be pretty suspicious here. They haven't seen the bounty hunter yet. This is a pretty common play. BH yeah. players at this level. That's something that you're always going to be looking for and, and keeping your eyes on. And maybe you just sit here a little bit longer. He drops down the observer ward as well. So going to have eyes on the invoker. And we'll see what this bounty hunter does. I mean, you don't just want to sit mid and sap experience away from your tinker. Um, but MSS is playing this about as well as you could. And he's going to have a good time. Like, he actually did go for that wex point. So now he has ghost walk and also is going to be able to have the bonus damage from the drow strat. So not necessarily having to go for the the. the super all any build, and he's going to make sure that he doesn't end up getting taken out early. Yeah, definitely. He'll get some eyes on the bounty hunter here, so that'll make him feel good. Uh, it's a pretty good laning stage for Shazam already. The lion was zoned out so hard that he had to walk back to the well. He had a couple of tangos left, but this has been a slow journey for him, and it's it's made this top lane a lot easier for the, the Radiant. I would expect Brax to have almost a few more last hits by now on the Abaddon, but... Still playing it pretty defensively, maybe thinking the lion is just hiding nearby in the trees. So far, Bounty Hunter hasn't really done a hell of a lot aside from the first blood. So reasonably slow start, as you mentioned, uh, that sentry ward down for MSS mid. I don't see any sentries on the dire side except for on the uh, faceless void here in the off lane. So it looks like Invoker Ooh. should be able to take control of mid. Jason, though, down bottom, and he pushed back pretty hard by the Bounty Hunter. Mad, diving pretty deep on him. Jason... Probably going to survive this one. This is kind of an awkward spot to be in. They're getting really deep into enemy territory here, and those tower shots hurt. They will be forced back. Vengeful Spirit survives, and all the while, TC happy to just try and get last hits against the tower here. 
Yeah, pretty good stuff. And this signals to MSS that he can be a little bit more cavalier in the mid lane. That was a, a push that, that uh, Mad was able to do with his creeps. And then that sort of was comboed really well with the Bounty Hunter moving mm -hmm. down there. But MSS needs to be a little bit more careful now mid. But yeah, the, they're not really going to be able to effectively zone out this Faceless Void to the first couple of levels. Still level two. It's going to be around the time that Silence is online and Vengeful Spirit gets a couple that it's going to be more uh, more strong, the, their ability to zone out that that faceless void for now though he's having a good wow. time there's an interesting stat small sample but a hundred percent win rate with faceless void six and oh is actually pretty impressive you know it's when you see two and oh three and oh it's like all right yeah they knocked down two derpy teams with faceless void but six and oh is a, is a pretty good run i guess definitely a sign that it's a hero they're comfortable with at the very least so we, we expect big things now all right more pressure on you faceless void only the biggest chronos now that we've seen the stats Absolutely. And that's something that you, you're always going to want is in these teams where they're sort of trying to define their personality, even at the highest levels, it's not necessarily about what's the best hero. It's about the best hero for your team. And right. while I need to be careful up top here is the lion is going to get hexed up, but showing off that power of the curse of Avernus early with the two points in that, uh, that shield as well. Product shield. Yeah, it's nice to have an early point mist quill just for deny capabilities. Here, there's been so little pressure on Brax, it hasn't really been a factor. We'll see the bounty hunter start to rotate in. He's now found level two, but out of clarities and pretty low on mana. So I, I would call this a victory for Shazam in terms of uh, keeping this bounty hunter at bay. Brax taking a lot of damage here, though. He'll have one more aquatic shield and the heal from Pandagos keeping him safe. Now they're going to turn onto the gyrocopter and the curse of Avernus doing serious work here. They actually turn it around. Oh no, the Abaddon gets one kill. It's about to be two. Say goodnight to the Demon Witch. They don't have detection for the bounty hunter, but they'll happily take a two for nil when they were the ones on the defensive. Talk about a backfire for DKB there. That was so well baited by Brax. He knew exactly where he was at each and every point of that engagement. I mean, even starting chasing that lion down, they, they didn't have a ton of mana on him. And because of that phase boots mango, he might even end up doing it again. The, the damage coming out from three points of Curse of Avernus is actually absurd. And on top of that, you get the bonus attack speed. Uh, meanwhile, mid lane also a little bit of trouble just all over the place. Look at the last hits right now. It's all three top of the way. And this is what the drow is going to give you. Yep, absolutely. Even the Abaddon. I mean, we saw him playing a little more defensive in the lane early on. It seems like they uh, figured out how defensive the Lion was because he was in the well, and then Brax started getting a lot more aggressive, and now his CS is on point, really dominating the Gyrocopter. You're feeling the problem now with the Bounty Hunter. When he doesn't achieve these early ganks, you're left with just one support, and you can't effectively zone out these two heroes with just the Lion, especially a hero like Abaddon. He's happy to trade right clicks with you. If he has mana for an Aphotic Shield, it's really no big deal, and this Gyrocopter really struggling and unfortunately it's one of those carries that I mean he can flash farm for recovery but he doesn't play as well from behind this is a hero that wants to slowly tempo and then hit that critical mass with flat cannon towards the late game DKB yeah. are going to need to do a lot with these mid-game team fights here, Lyrical. It's going to be really tough, too, because you don't even really... They aggressively dual lane the Gyrocopter Lion. Lion not necessarily the greatest at zoning out. But you got the Bounty Hunter who's trying to make things happen in the mid lane, just getting punched in the face by MSS. And uh. so there aren't stacks being made, either. Like, all of these things are just working against DKB right now, and Brax is going to dive in again. He is so fast with the Curse of Avernus. Right now, doing 94 damage a pop with his phase boots. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and just eat his mango, get healed up by Pandago, just about level 6. And that unlocks a whole new world of potential for the Abad. And we'll see a ward come down, and uh, Dyer getting a lot of vision. He'll take the plateau, that's where it is. It looks go. like they do want to start putting some pressure on this top lane, but honestly, the, the Abaddon's annoying, but I don't know that that's even your biggest problem. This Invoker farming away, he is going to commit to Quas Wex, so not the Exor we were both thinking. This will, of course, give them a lot of control, allow him to peel for the Draw Ranger if TC gets jumped on, so it still does work with the strategy they're going for. Um, can definitely strike at that, that mid-game timing we were talking about, knockdown towers, but it is a little surprising to see that difference. Yeah, I think this might be in response to the Void, uh, just the, the power that he gives your your team. And maybe what the idea here is that you force him to choose between Time Walk and, and Chronosphere, because he doesn't have the highest mana in, oh, in the world. And actually, nice he's going to be in trouble. Oh, God, that hurts. Spential Spirit finds the kill three to one, but... Uh, nice I mean, setup there. It's still Tinker that's doing okay in the mid lane. 30 and 9, it's not bad for him. And he's going to be able to get these, these Boots of Travel fairly soon. Yeah, it's an even spread in the mid lane. MSS doing very well himself, but oh, are we going to see Brax go for something else here? It's a three on one, but he is 
Six. He hasn't skilled his ult yet. He's going to decide whether he wants to use the point. There we go. He does pop it. Tries to catch him by cigar. Uh, by their surprise, rather. And uh, Brax probably just going to end up falling here. He pops the Aphotic Shield once more. Void actually joining the party. Now we see the time dilation. And finally, Gyrocopter will secure the kill with the help of the Bounty Hunter. Two oh, to three. Created, DKB, though, get back. Back mid towards the mid lane. Invoker. Oh, no. The Tornado. MSS going to finish him off in style. Yeah, I think yeah. they'll take that trade. That, that was space created for the mid lane, and it, when you have four heroes rotate up towards the top lane and you're barely able to kill off the off lane, or just, it really hurts the soul, you know? Yeah. Um, and now you're also going to, you, you've brought the Void out of lane, they've got a Catapult here, they're going to start to push in bottom because they got the single pull, which allows them to, to get this one under the tower, and they should probably be able to take this. This is just really, really uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, really down? costly for Up DKB. Top. We'll see Brax dive onto this one. He's got the Curse of the Avernus. There's no reason why he can't just keep diving past this tower. He's got an Aphotic Shield. His ult's coming up in one second. He can afford to be very aggressive here. He gets the next auto attack. Bounty Hunter trying to slow him down, but can't do anything to save his Gyrocopter. Now Brax in pretty deep, but he's going to run for it. Does not have a TP scroll. Still holding on to the borrowed time. If he makes it out of here, we are really seeing the power of the Abaddon. Void does have a Chronosphere. Now the cast bouncing around. There's the ultimate, but look how much damage he's done in return. He almost kills the Lion. He has the Aphotic Shield on. The Chrono does literally no damage. Lion dies at the burst of the shield. He's going to get another one off. Mad likely to die as well. Oh my oh, god. They are making this Abaddon look unkillable at this stage. This is just unreal. He tanked oh. an uh, entire Chronosphere ultimate and got two kills out of it. He, he caught his other teammates in it too, so a little bit not the best of the plays. It just, it, it was a bad situation made worse. That all started with a dive from Abaddon, and then you see TC and Jason take the tier one tower and about to take the tier two. This is disastrous at this point for uh, for, for drinking buddies. Um, and I don't know exactly how you come back at this point. You've just sort of dug yourself a hole and... Yeah. I'm, Look at the bottom lane. This is where it's really brutal. TC is going to get a free tier 2 tower at the 9 minute mark. We thought they'd have to 5 man to siege these, and they're just going to walk through and get them. Well, wow. I mean, alright. <laughs> Tinker is 20 gold away from Boots of Travel. The net worth advantage is pretty shocking, but he, he's the sort of lone bright spot, the smallest of silver clouds. Um, he, he can make this work. And Laser's actually really good against Drow as well. They're going to try and wrap around and might be able to find the Vengeful Spirit, but I don't think that Drow is going to get caught here. Yeah, Drow is on the high ground. Nearby, Jason just goes to TP out right away. This is definitely not going to work. They'll get a freebie there, 7-3. to three. I mean, they'll take any kill they can get at this stage, but more space created. Brax now has a full Vlad's offering, just farming away in the top lane. They're going to take out this tier one tower. And Oker mid, still just having a field day, now really starting to pull ahead of this Tinker. About 4.5k net worth to 3.7. Doesn't feel like that big of a difference, but considering it's basically just been the lane, uh, that's that's tower gold right there. And if MSS can use this, he'll start to pull ahead. It looks like he's just going to go into hand of Midas. So all that early gold is really going to make a difference in terms of his ability to start to snowball even more. I mean, how often is it that you see a Drow strat and Drow is not the main major focal point, the talking point that you're going to end up running into? Yeah. For this game, Brax has taken over the game. Like, he is yeah. just completely dominating face. And now they've got an Invoker problem. They've got a Brax problem. They've got a Drow problem. They got some problems, man. This is, <laughs> this is, this is not the best. Yeah, I glanced at the uh, graphs here, uh, 7.5k net worth, uh, about the same in experience. It's a pretty big deficit for the 11 minute mark. Brax just going to tank this tier 1 tower mid, that's another outer tower down. Only two remain for DKB, a tier 2 in the mid, and a tier 2 up top. We're going to see Shazam now just venture through the enemy jungle. No smoke needed, really. They're just going to walk on in and say, hey, we're pretty confident you don't have wards, and if you do, well, we're still ready to fight. So, uh, drum, or uh, infuse raindrop on MSS, an interesting choice, but makes sense against the Tinker. He is down to one charge on it now, but it has uh, made him a lot more sustainable in the lane. Oh, well, there it goes. Yeah, yep. it's a little sad, but it's, it, it definitely, I mean, that was the one worry that they had was a burst of damage coming out from the Tinker, Rockets, Laser, plus some Bounty Hunter shenanigans, and now they're going to be sort of transitioning into this point where there's not a whole lot to do to deal with them. You are going to see a rotation that moves down here. This is a pretty bold move with three heroes, but the smoke's going to break. Jason yep. again. Walks right into it. He pops a smoke, or a dust rather. 
Nikki in the Drown maybe can make something happen. She's got the Dragon Lance now, and they're going to rotate. They go right in onto the Void. No mana, nowhere to go. Fall down, will connect on TC as the Gyrocopter tries to TP out. MSS, no way to interrupt, doesn't have an Invoke. Meanwhile, up top, <laughs> Baden gets a tower. Might get the kill on Lion. One more <laughs> auto attack, not quite going to be there. Lion does get the deny on the tower, so that's a very minor victory. DKB, but Brax will secure his entire Drum of the Endurance now. And everybody else just keep pushing down bottom. Dragon Lance, an item that feels like it's almost made for Drow Ranger. Easy build up, 15 oh, agi, 15 strength. Mid lane too. Uh oh, oh. we gonna see gonna another one? Being the dead tinker. Yep, yeah, he right. goes down. Oh god, he TP'd right into MSS, and now Brax is gonna be able to kill off the bounty hunter as well. I believe. Uh, no, oh, he gets away. Uh, that but, actually would have got him if the uh, shield connected. It, it's it's this thing now where you look at this bounty hunter, and we talked about in the draft, he's not level 6 yet. So even if they do start winning fights, which is not a guarantee by any means, as Lion is just about oh to get exploded. Oh my god, this loaded. poor guy. <laughs> wrong place, uh, wrong time, buddy. They still don't get that gold advantage. So, I mean, it, it's, it's from bad to worse. Yeah. Right now we're seeing why it was the 83-17% uh, difference on Dota 2 Lounge. Shazam definitely living up to the expectation here. Just showing their experience, working every lane. Even the little missteps they've had where they've lost a hero or they've they've had somebody die in an unfortunate situation, they always found something else around the map. They're split pushing elsewhere, they're dominating, they're rotating heroes, and they're really choosing when to take these fights. I mean, look at this. Bounty Hunter is still not yet level 6. Lion, still not yet level 6. These are two heroes that are pretty underwhelming until they hit their ultimates, uh, for the most part. Without even having track on Lion, these defenses have been so hard to make. It will mm -hmm. finally get it, though, and maybe this is the beginning of the turn. High ground is where DKB can really shine, but again, Lion just out way too far. He's going to get caught, get silenced, and that's another easy one here for Shazam. Yeah, you can understand the play. You you want to move out, you want to get some vision down, you want to try and make something happen for your team, and he was trying to place a ward, but it's just, you, you can't do it. Um, there, there's too much pressure on them all, and uh, unfortunately, I feel like they're they're playing this game in a way where it's just never going to end up working for them. They're trying to, I mean, Gyrocopter's still getting a decent amount of farm and trying to move out there along the top lane. He's going to be able to TP back, but this is going to be a tough, uh, a tough hold here. Yeah, basically the, the dream chrono, I think, could maybe make it happen, but they still don't have the finger to follow up to just burst somebody down. They also have the Abaddon who can cleanse off the track, which uh, a mechanic we didn't really mention, but just further evidence about this draft for Shazam being well-rounded. They've got the damage, and they've got the spells to keep their cores alive. TC now going to be in the front line. Send it to low <laughs> ground, compliments of that Dragonlance, just pushes the Void back, says, mm-mm, not right now. This is my house, baby. I'm Get knocking on here. your front door, and I'm coming right in. I, that's, I mean, that was just the tier 3 tower gone, and they are going to go forward looking oh, for the Oh my god. Silence, no. This poor void. That is one of the sad. I mean, he doesn't have a face, but that is the saddest void I think I've ever seen. Gyrocopter are going to get blown up as well, and DKB, possibly moments from a GG. I mean, we're only 15 minutes in, but I, I mean, they're just falling apart as they try to make this defense. Brax fin finally has to use his ult, but that's just a borrowed time down. They still have a full Aegis. They get three kills in exchange for none, and that's a lane of barracks down. One of the easiest pushes I think Shazam's ever had. I mean, Drow has 3,700 gold right now that's not invested into anything. It, the problem with Drow strats in the past was that you couldn't transition out of them. You can now because of the items that have been added into the game, and yep. it's... I... <laughs> I, I don't want to say the game is over, but... Uh, I think this is over. <laughs> Boy, is Void even going to get to Chrono? I mean, this is just brutal to watch. They counter-initiate so effectively. Tornado shuts down the Gyrocopter. There's the Chrono, but MSS isn't even stuck in it, and that's the hero he's going for. He's so goddamn mad, he's just throwing Chronos out left and right. It's an unfortunate game for DKB, but they came, they tried, they have since been defeated. Uh, a perfect showing for Shazam. Maybe not perfect, but... Uh, damn good. Brax, I think, really stole the show. 6-1 and 7. MSS ends with a slightly better score, 9-0 and 3. But up in that off lane, man, that dual lane worked so well for Shazam. That was what really opened up for them to take control of the game so early and so easily. Yeah, Brax is a player. He, he's awesome. He went 6-1 and 7, uh, 600 GPM on an Abaddon. That's absolutely ridiculous. And we, the thing about it is that normally when you see a bounty hunter draft get punished early, it's by virtue of being a first pick, and then you 